give you an overview on the status that we obtain in the Nanoterra project Mixel. So this project has a target to develop a very cheap mass-producible ultra-fast laser which can be then used for numerous applications. And uh, it's a collaboration between the group of Ursula Keller at ETH Zurich who is a PI, um, Ellie Capone's group at EPFL Lausanne, uh, my group at the University of Neuchâtel, and Bernd Witzigmann's group, who previously was at ETH Zurich and who is now at the University of Kassel. So let me start with a reminder on ultra-fast lasers. So ultra-fast lasers generate short pulses, and with short, I mean picosecond or femtosecond duration. With these pulses, you can investigate uh, extremely short events. That's one application area. But because you have short pulses, you also can put quite a lot of these pulses into a short time interval. So for example, if you have picosecond pulses, you can put billions of pulses in one second. And this is highly attractive, for example, for optical interconnects or for application like optical clocking. Another advantage if you have ultra-short laser pulses is that because this light is coherent, and already concentrated in time, well, if you now concentrate it also in space by focusing it down, you can generate extremely high intensities. This allows you to, for example, to, uh, well, to exploit nonlinear effects in material processing or to nonlinear imaging, for example, using uh, multi-photon imaging. So it's these are multi-photon images which were obtained with our semiconductor lasers. So the first multi-photon images from any uh, picosecond semiconductor laser. And this was done in a collaboration with the ICFO in Barcelona. A third advantage if you have ultra-short laser pulses is that a train of ultra-short pulses in the frequency domain corresponds to individual lines which are extremely precise. So you have a whole bunch of lines which you can use as a ruler in the optical space and this allows you to generate um, clocks which have a much, much better accuracy than the best atomic clocks we have. Um, other applications are also that you can take such a COM, take a second COM slightly offset, and you can do COM spectroscopy. You have a very simple detection way where you then can span a large range for spe uh, spectroscopy and sensing applications. Now, all these applications have already been demonstrated that they work. But there is one big issue, and that is that the laser systems which are currently used in these applications are too, exp too expensive and too complex. So here you can see a typical image of such a laser which is used in many labs today. And if you would like to give such a laser to a doctor so that he can do some, some sensing applications, you also have to employ a physicist who takes care of the laser. So this is not really a cost-efficient solution. And we think that we have to go for semiconductor lasers if we want to change this, because for semiconductor lasers in the continuous wave world, it already worked. You have diet lasers in laser printers and compact displays in many applications. The whole internet is based on lasers. And what we are investigating in this project is a slightly different approach for semiconductor lasers. It's not based on edge emitters, but on vertical emitters. And we have a gain chip, which provides the laser light. And then we have another chip, which is a CSAM, which provides a pulse formation so that you can generate the femtosecond or the picosecond pulses. And uh, in this project, we then also study the integration of both elements into a single structure, which in this way becomes extremely easy and simple to manufacture. So when we started the project, what we wanted to do was trying to improve it trying to improve the output powers, the pulse durations, and also operate at different wavelengths. And in order to achieve such a performance, we had to understand and optimize the searchable absorbers. 
And in our consortium, we are really in, in an excellent position for this because uh, Professor Witzigmann is a specialist for the simulation of such semiconductor structures. And uh, Eddie Capone's group and Ursula Keller group are leading groups in the field of vertical emitters. And then what we also wanted to do is we wanted to try application studies to see if these lasers have the same advantages than the standard dye pumped lasers. And so that was a, that's a role of my group in Neuchâtel. We wanted to see if we can use these lasers, for example, for metrology applications. So let me now focus on the state uh, of art that we achieved today. So one key result that we obtained was that we could realize a wafer fusion process which substantially improved the performance because we have now the flexibility to combine excellent uh, semiconductor materials, for example, for the mirror structure, with other semiconductor materials just by wafer bonding, indium phosphide, for example, for the gain structures. And this, allows us to, this allowed us to demonstrate unprecedented power levels in the 1.3 micron region from such uh, optically pumped vessels. And um, this technology has been patented, so recently uh, it was a granted patent. And um, we could also demonstrate mode locking of these structures. A second milestone result that we obtained in this project was a demonstration of high power levels in femtosecond pulses. So here in this diagram you can see the average power uh, versus pulse duration for uh, mode locked vessels. Mode locked vessels can generate very short pulses, so some groups in the UK and also in Germany have demonstrated that you even can go to 200 femtoseconds, or this starts at 10 milliwatts, if it would start at 1 milliwatt, would even have a dot at 100 femtoseconds, but then only at 3 milliwatts, and for many applications this is not enough. Now, the problem was that at the typical power levels that you need for applications of hundreds of milliwatts, or let's say 100 milliwatts up to a watt, uh, short pulses were not possible. And in this project we could demonstrate that if we optimize the central absorber for fast recovery, and also if we control the dispersion, that we can realize a source where we have femtosecond operation, so 800 femtoseconds, here you can see the autocorrelation, and a watt power level. In this case, we are actually also using quantum dots not only in the CSEM, but also in the gain region. So this is a sketch of the cavity. Now, with a Mixel, the integrated version of such an ultra-fast vexel, um, we could demonstrate in this project the highest average power from any ultra-fast semiconductor laser. So this is the dot shown here, 6.4 watt um, at about 20 to 30 femtoseconds. So the power level is very impressive. So here in blue you can see the different mixer results that we obtained in the project. But one problem that at the moment we are still facing with the mixer results is we also would like to move them towards shorter pulses. Depends always on the application area. If you want to do telecommunication, such a duration is fine. But if you want to do, for example, biomedical imaging, you would prefer to have shorter pulse durations. In the project, we realized that the problem we were facing was that the quantum dot layer, which we used that absorber inside the mixer structure, was annealed and showed a very slow recombination process. So in this diagram, you can see the saturation behavior versus time. And uh, in the absorber that we're using in the mixel, well, we reach a 50% recovery only after about 80 picoseconds. And this is why we could not generate femtoseconds with this structure. Here in red you can see uh, the quantum dot system, which we are using in the one watt result. So it has a substantially faster recombination dynamics. Now, very recently, we obtained uh, an improvement in the quant in, uh, quantum dot saturable absorbers. And we could also integrate them into mixels. And as you can see, they have an even faster recombination time than the absorber that we are using in the 1 watt 800 femtosecond result. And this could be integrated into a mixel structure. These are very first results. We did not optimize the structure at all for thermal properties. 
So it's on a thick gallium arsenide wafer and the thermal conductivity is pretty low. However, we couldn't already demonstrate that it works. Uh, just with the first structure, we could obtain 4.8 picosecond pulses, so substantially shorter pulse durations. And uh, the sh shorter pulse durations also enabled us to scale up the repetition rate. So here you can see a picture of a 20 gigahertz cavity. That's the output coupler. That's the gain chip, very close together. And um, so this technology works. And now in the next step, we have to optimize the dispersion and then also do the improvements in thermal properties. And then we think that we can also obtain watt level powers in femtosecond pulses from mixels. So thank you very much for your uh, attention. I would quickly like to mention that we also have five posters. So if you have any further questions about the technical details, please come to our posters. Thank you very much. Thank you.